Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this black mangrove tree using Speedtree Cinema 9. For this project I'm going to use the following images as the main reference. I'll be uploading the files of this project along with some models from the previous tutorials on my Gumroad in case you want to take a look at them in more detail. So now, let's start. For this scene I'm going to use the Seaside Light preset as it's an environment where this type of mangrove grows. Now I'm going to add a trunk template. Templates can help you to save time when building your tree as they come with values like flares, noise and displacement already set. If you want to start from scratch then you can add a trunk tube generator instead. Now I'm going to assign the bark material. And after that I'm going to reduce its size and radius. Right now this looks too straight so I'm going to increase the late noise amount. The next thing I want to do is to split this trunk into two branches. To do that, I'm going to go to the skin tab and here I'm going to increase the chance value to 1. You can see how now there are two open ends at the top of the trunk. To extend these you can add an extension generator preset. Now, I'm reducing the length of the main trunk because I want the split to start near the ground level. Keep in mind that if you need to adjust the properties of the split you have to do it on the parent, not on the extension. Here you have the option to smooth the inner and outer parts of the split region. In this case, I'm going to leave the inner smooth value at zero so it looks as if they were two trunks. Now I'm going to select the extension and here I'm going to increase its length. But first I'm going to explain a bit about the difference between the absolute and relative length. With the absolute value you set the minimum length of the branches. This length won't change if you vary the length of its parent. On the other hand, the percent of parent value will add a length equal to this value multiplied by the length of its parent. For example, a value of 0.25 means that 25% of the parent's length will be added to the branch's length. As you can see, the last one adds a more organic look since branches tend to become longer when a tree grows. So, always try to add some percent of parent length. For this case I'm going to use an absolute value of 7 and 0.25 of percent of parent. Now what I want to do is to separate these branches, so I'm going to select the trunk generator and here I'm going to increase the side 1 and side 2 spread values. These branches look too flat from the side, so I'm going to increase their late noise amount to give them more shape. I also want to increase the radius at the top of these branches because I don't want them to become too thin when I extend them. Now I'm going to add a first level of branches, for this I'm going to use the big branches preset. This preset is by default in interval mode, but in this case I'm going to change it to absolute steps because I want to have more control over the number of branches that are going to be generated. I'm going to use 3 steps and 3 branches per step. And then I'm going to extend the parent. To do this, change the extend parent property from none to any. This will add a branch at any open end of the parent. After that I change the first property so these branches start from a lower point. I also increase the spread value to apply a random up or down offset in their position. Then I went to the skin tab and here I increased their radius. Now I want to make the bottom branches longer than the top ones, so, to do this I'm going to go to the green curve of the length parameter. You can see that the big branches preset comes with this custom curve, so, I'm going to reset it and then change it. Then I'm going to add some variance in the rotation and the position. Now, notice that this branch is going down and this other one is going up. I want them to be more planar so they don't go towards the ground. So, I'm going to add a planar force. This force will make the branches grow along this 2D plane. Here you can see the effect of this force on the branches. In this case I'm going to choose a value of 1. You can edit its effect on the branches by going to the forces tab. With the blue curve I'm going to make them more planar from the start. And with the green curve I'm going to decrease this effect on the higher branches. 
Next, I'm going to add some negative gravity value to bend the end of the branches. This will help us to prevent the next branches from touching the ground. And then I'm going to increase the late noise amount. You can now hide this force to see the tree better. If you want to unhide it, go to the generation window and at the bottom you can find all the forces you have on your scene. As you can see there is a visible overlap of the lower branches. To fix this I'm going to decrease the sweep value. A value of zero will group the branches of each step at a specific place. Here I'm using its green curve to decrease this value for the lower branches. Now I'm going to add another level of branches. To do this I'm going to duplicate our last generator and paste it onto it so that way we can save some time. Right now it's becoming difficult to see what is happening, so I'm going to select a branch from our first set of branches and hit F to focus. This will isolate the selected branch and all the branches that are attached to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is to change the generation mode to interval so that way we can generate more branches if I make the tree larger. Then, I'm going to increase the first value and change the count number to 3. Next, I'm going to reduce the rotation variance to zero. You see that if I add too much of this value more branches start to go towards the ground and I don't want that. To lift these branches I'm going to edit the blue curve of the gravity parameter. And I also want their radius to be thicker at their ends. If you hit Shift F you can clear the focus and see the overall look of the tree. You can see there is a warning sign at the bottom saying that the weld has failed on some branches. The weld is a set of rings added to the base of each branch in order to simulate a smooth transition into their parent. If you click on the warning sign, it will give you a hint on what to do to fix this problem. In this case it says that you need to increase the last boundary value. And by doing that, the warning sign has disappeared. Now, I don't want to add welds to this level as they are not going to be too visible, so, instead I'm going to turn them off. To do this, go to the Skin tab and here uncheck Enabled. And finally, for this level of branches, I'm going to smooth the late noise. To add the next level of branches, I'm going to use the Twigs preset. This preset adds small branches in groups of three. Again, I'm going to focus on one branch to edit the twig's parameters. The first thing I'm going to do is to change the extend parent property from none to any. This will add another twig at the end of the parent branch. Then I'm going to increase the frequency to generate more branches. And then I'm going to change the count number to two. Next, I increase the first value because I just wanted to fill the outer part of the tree and after that we can add some variance in the position and rotation. For the length, I'm going to make the twigs near the base larger so that way we can fill the outer part of the tree. And finally, I'm going to add a negative gravity value to bend these twigs upwards. Now I'm going to add a last set of branches, so, I'm going to duplicate the twigs generator and paste it onto it. Again, I'm going to focus on one branch. For these ones I'm going to add an absolute length value of 0.5 as I want them to have this minimum length. And then I'm going to set a value of 0.25 on the percent of the parent length so they will become a bit larger depending on the length of its parent branch. Next I'm going to adjust its boundary values and frequency. If we look at this whole branch from the side, you'll notice that it looks too flat, so I'm going to increase the count to 3. And finally, I'm going to decrease the gravity value to bend them more. Now it's time to add the leaves. I'm going to start by adding a batched leaf generator. 
This generator works well when working with trees with many leaves as they are computed faster than the leaf mesh generator. The main downside of it is that you can't edit them in the node mode. Now I'm going to assign the leaf material. Here you can see I created a cutout mesh for each leaf of the texture. To edit the leaves parameters I'm going to focus on one branch. Here, first, I'm going to reduce the size of the leaves and also add some variance. Then I'm going to change the generation mode to Philotaxi. And I'm going to focus again. To add more leaves to the twigs you need to reduce the internode length parameter. Right now the leaf arrangement is set to opposite to stitches. In the reference images you can see that the leaf arrangement of this tree is opposite to cussate. That way each group of leaves is rotated 90 degrees from the previous group. Now I'm going to increase the face value to rotate the leaves 90 degrees. And I'm going to increase the align value to rotate the leaves towards their twigs. To make these leaves point more towards the sky, I'm going to increase the sky sensitivity a bit. Once we set their position, we can start adding shape. We can do so by changing the fold, curl and twist parameters. And finally, we can unfocus to see how it's looking. Now I'm going to create the roots. I'm going to start by adding a tube generator. Then, I'm going to decrease its size and hide the upper part of the tree. And after that I'm going to set a lower radius value. For the generation mode I chose the absolute mode. With the number parameter you can choose how many of these tubes are going to be generated. Here you can see that there are too many tubes at the center, so I took the yellow curve of the number parameter to distribute them evenly. To break up the circular shape I added some variance in the position. If we go to the scribed mode, we can see that there are too many subdivisions. We don't need that many, so I'm going to decrease it. And with the distribution curve I'm going to push the subdivisions towards the top because I want to round them just as in the reference. We can also try to lower the radial segments. Now, with the blue curve of the radius parameter I made this shape to round them at the top. Here you can notice that the UV has hard seams. To fix this, go to the UV tab and change the style to U and V locked. There were hard seams because the texture was darker at the bottom and brighter at the top. After that I'm going to add some radial displacement to break up that flat look. And with its blue curve I'm going to decrease this effect at their bases. As they still look too uniform in length I decided to add variance to this parameter. To make them look more organic I'm going to add some variance in the start angle too. And to make them all point upwards I'm going to add a negative gravity value. Now I think the model is finished, so we can start the optimization process. By the way, if you hit C, you can hide the highest generator visible, and if you hit X you do the opposite action, just as you see here. I'm going to start by optimizing the main trunk. For this one I'm going to choose a value of 0.25. For the next level I'm also going to set a value of 0.25. This one has too many length subdivisions, so I'm going to lower its value. And then I'm going to apply an optimization of 0.25. For the next level we also have too many segments, so I'm going to decrease its value. The next one seems fine so I'm going to leave it like that. And for the last level, I'm just going to reduce the radial segments at the end of each branch. I'm not going to touch the length segments as I don't want them to look flat. Now only the root structure is left. First, I'm going to isolate it. 
you see that even if I add a small optimization value, they completely lose their shape. So, what I'm going to do is to grab its green curve and maintain the optimization just near the center where they are less visible. You can see that we reduced more than 200,000 polygons. If your tree is still too high in polygon count you can try to switch the resolution of your model to medium or low. You can find those buttons on the viewport toolbar. You can see how the polygon count is reduced even more by changing to medium or low. Each generator has its own resolution curves which you can find on its segments tab. Here you'll find four points, each corresponding to a different resolution of the model. You can see here that the length segments in the medium resolution is going to be reduced to 75% of its actual value, and it will be reduced to 50% in the low resolution. You can edit those values if you want. For the resolution of the leaves you have to make the meshes manually. Here you can see the leaf mesh I made for the high resolution. To make a low version you can edit this mesh, and then by clicking the right arrow on the low window you can set this mesh as the low resolution. Then if you go to the low resolution you will see these meshes on your tree. The low resolution might not look good from a close view, but you can see that, from a distant view, it is not noticeable. To export the low or medium resolution model just make sure you are on that resolution. Then, you can export it as you normally do. You can export this model or you can randomize it to generate different versions of it. Once you find a model that you like you can make some final edits in the node and freehand mode. For example, I want to move this branch to cover the front part of the tree, so I'm changing to the node mode and here I'm going to select that branch. An orange dot will appear. If you click and drag, you can move the branch along its parent or rotate it around it. It's also useful to lift some branches that are too close to the ground, like this one. Another useful tool is the Click Place tool. With this tool you can add more branches in specific places on your tree, just as you see here. To add new branches you need to hold space and then click on the place where you want a branch. These new branches will also be procedural, so you can edit their properties like length and radius like you normally do. If you want to delete these branches go back to the freehand mode, select the branch in the left panel and then hit remove. To end this video I want to make a quick overview of how I transformed the bush version of this mangrove into a tree version similar to this reference. The first thing I did was to grab this extension generator and I made it larger. Then, for the next level of branches I increased the first boundary value, and I also decreased the planar force. In the bush version, the percent of parent length was at 0.4, but in this case this value is too high since the parent is larger than before. So, I added an absolute value of 1 to set a minimum length and then I added a smaller value on the percent of parent length. For the next level, I increased the frequency, so that way I added more branches. After that, I copied this set of generators and pasted them onto the extension. Then I made them shorter and added more late noise. One last thing I'd like to mention is that you can prune the leaves on some specific parts of your tree. To do this select your leaf generator and open the pruning curve. Here I'm going to select the extension level. and I'm going to make a stair shape to prune the leaves at the top of the tree. Make sure the pruning value of these points is exactly zero. Finally, I exported this model and made the following renders inside Blender. You can find the images on my ArtStation account. And that would be all, thanks for watching.